I'm going to show you how to get an Excel column name from a column number. And the way you do that is with two functions, the address function and the substitute function. So for example, if I want the column name of this reference here, it's A1, say I just want the A. The way I do that, uh, the way I get the reference is by doing address. So it's a, formula, it's a function here called address, and it takes in a row number so row one, for example, and the important part, because I want the column number, is the column number. And uh, A is the first column, so I'm going to give it one. If I just close it off here, uh, you s I'm going to get an absolute reference. And you can see that uh, this is a relative reference. There's no dollar signs. The way you get rid of those dollar signs, you can do that in the function as well. If you click on this, uh, if you click a comma you can see that there's some optional uh, parameters here the ones in brackets are always optional but you can get more information on what to put inside those if you click this insert function uh, icon here and this will give you just some guidance on what to put for this particular field uh, I think this one's the most important because it makes your substitute function uh, a little easier because it gets rid of those dollar signs for you if you go with the relative reference uh, this one just changes the presentational style to a uh, row column uh, output, and this just appends uh, some sheet name if you wanted to put a sheet name in front of the reference. But again, I think this one's the most important since it gets rid of those dollar signs. So if we click OK, we get the reference for A1, but we want this column name. And the way you do that is with a substitute f uh, function. So substitute, if you type in substitute, substitute takes some text and then replace, you, then you have to specify some text you want to replace and then what you want to replace it with. You have some optional parameter here of how many times you want to replace it. If you just close off the function, you replace it every time and that's what we're going to do in this case. So for text here, we want the address. The text we want to replace is that one one and we just want to replace it with blank and we don't care how many times it shows up we just want to replace it so you can see there we get the column name so with these two functions we get the Excel column name uh, if I think Excel has about 16,000 or so columns so if we change the column number here we can see that the function changes but if we change the row number uh, it's not going to work because we're not substituting uh, this number, we're substituting one. We'd have to change it uh, to that number to, in, in order to it to work. Um, so why would we want to do this? Why would we need the Excel column then, uh, na name? Uh, here's one example. Say you're doing some data entry in Excel and you have some fields and you want to create a user guide so that the users that are using this Excel file and entering this data can give you better quality data because they know what they're entering in these fields. <coughs> it has a clear definition. And in your user guide, you want to include these Excel column names uh, for easy reference. So if you tell them, uh, look for the phone number field, they might not know exactly where it is in your data file, especially if you have 100 columns. But if you, have, but if you say, look in column D for phone number, that's a lot easier for them to navigate in the file. So you could create a table like this that has the field order, uh, the field name. So this is the order in which the field appears. This is the field name itself and its description of what the field is and what they should, and some guidance on uh, what to enter in that field, etc. And here's where you put the formula, uh, the two functions here for to get that column name. What this formula does here, it uses a uh, reference to the field order. So this basically looks at this gets you your column number. So you have a static row. You're always going to be looking at the first row. That's the number you're going to be replacing essentially because you really don't care what it is. You could put like 900 here. It doesn't really matter as long as you put 900 here as well in your substitute formula. And but this is the most important one because you're trying to get the column number, and you have that in your field order. And then yeah, that's it. So let's step through it since we already know how the function works, and we can see exactly what's going on in the formula. So here we have this reference to the column number that's dynamic. So if we evaluate that, 
In this instance, we're going to get 1 because that's what's in A2 for this row. And then it's going to input 1 in this address formula. So it's going to look at row 1, column 1, and return a relative reference for that. So if you click evaluate, we should get A1. Row 1, column 1 is A1. And it's going to take this text, A1, and look for 1 and replace it with nothing. And it's, not, and it's going to replace it every time because we didn't specify any instance number. So what we should get from this, when it's all said and done, is the column name A. And if we click evaluate, that's what we get. And that's what we see here as well. So I was just stepping through the formula so you can see how it works. Uh, if we drag this down, you can see that it's dynamic because it's based on this field row, uh, this field order. So if you add in another field, for example, like toads or something, it's, it's going to be there. Even if you insert one, say you come back later and you have to add more fields, like Bob or something, you just can start from the top and drag down, and it will change it all. So I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, comments, feedback, just let me know in the comments below, and thanks.